Hey, I'm Renee, but you can call me Blade, and this is the Oh My God Show. <laughs> and today, as you can see from the type, title, I just want to explain to you that at the moment, I am out of a job because my company for the past um, couple of months have been downsizing, and finally, they got to my name. Um, what actually happened is that my contract should end next month. So about two days ago, I was informed, two or three days, is it? Yeah, two days ago plus today, maybe three, two days, two or three days. Like, I can't do the math. <laughs> but like, yeah, a few days ago, let's say a few. So a few days ago, I was informed um, by my company that um, they will not be able to renew my contract. Now, this has happened to many, many, many of my colleagues. So while it is a very big um I, I, I would say that life changing as well as like a crossroads decision for me, I kind of, I'm not really shocked because um, it has happened to many people. I know the company is downsizing, things are, you know, everybody knows um, globally what is happening now. So um, it didn't really necessarily come as a shock to me. And I was one of those persons who were saying that it would make sense that if they need to downsize, that they would not renew the contracts of people whose contracts are going to be uh, due. And <laughs> yes, so I am one of those people who are now um, I'm in the process now of dusting off my resume that I've tucked away for many years now. And I am on the table of the job market. And um, yeah, it's been it's been an amazing year working with this company. I have had really um, mostly good, more good experiences than bad with the company, with my colleagues, with the customers. And it has been, it has, it was indeed a life changing job for me. And I believe as well that um, something that I always said about this company as well is that even if I left, I would always say, even if I left the company today, my life would have already been irrevocably changed by the experience of working with them. And for those of you who know me personally and watch my channel, you know that my faith is my life. Like my faith in God has kept me through many trauma, drama, disaster. And the funny thing about it is that a few videos ago, I think two videos ago, I made a video and in that video, I spoke about embracing your seasons. And that time when I did that video and uploaded it, I had no idea that I would have lost my job. And I also made another video um, that, that spoke to, um, it's called, Why I'm Not Afraid to Lose My Job. So if you listen to Why I'm Not Afraid to Lose My Job, and if you listen to Embrace Your Season, this video might even make more sense. So before I knew that I, w I would have lost my job, but maybe, maybe it's a month ago or more, I made that video because when I explained to my, um, one of my siblings that, listen, you know, my company is cutting back people. I don't know what is happening with my job. And he was so innocent and he said to me, I don't want you to come back home to suffer, you know? So I made the video because I wanted to tell him that I cannot be defined by a job. I cannot be defined by an opportunity. I cannot be defined by an experience because I'm defined by the destiny that God has for me, right? I am defined by that destiny. And then I am happy as well that I was able to share that video. And the funny thing is, I made the video um, with my colleagues in mind who had lost their job. I wanted um, to use that video. I was told by another colleague too that she listened to the video and she said, you should share this with our colleagues. Um, because I feel like this video would, would be a source of strength to those people. So when I got the email that let me know that I my contract would no longer be renewed, I looked at the email and I was okay. And I know that that was God's peace. That was God's peace. Now I'm going to tell you a Bible story that's going to make a lot of sense now. So there is a very great prophet in the Bible that's called Elijah. And Elijah would was was just a very great prophet and he would get uh, you know instructions from God as to what to do so I think because of the wickedness of what was going on in the area that was ruled by a king called Ahab God decided to punish them I think by sending drought and famine and whatever so he told he went to Elijah and told Elijah to go and tell them about this obviously so it, it, it became a, 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 
uh, thing now where the uh, you know the drought came and everything and God told Elijah to go to a particular space a particular place I think there was a tree there there was a brook a little water brook running by and God would supernaturally send ravens with bread and I think meat uh, quail or something to feed Elijah so he would send uh, was it meat? It's either meat or vegetable, but he, bread was there, right? So he would send these birds with the food for him. And then Elijah, the prophet, he would um, drink water from the brook, right? And he, he and God uh, sustained him supernaturally during that period where obviously where he lives, there was a drought or where he lived before. God told him to go to this place. And now God has provided and nourished him and taken care of him and everything. And then something happened. The brook dried up so the brook dried up and remember that this is where elijah gets water from there's no water where he comes from so you know how we human beings we can only survive for so long without water so if the brook dried up he would either die or something or he would have to move on so eventually um if you read the story um elijah had to move on and god obviously provided in the next season or the next phase of elijah's life and I thought as well to when Peter was walking on water and how God saved him. But somebody actually came to keep my company because they knew that I lost my job. And she was listening, letting me listen to uh, this, um, this, uh, this YouTube video by this. Um, and, and she mentioned the story as well about the brook being dried up. So, I believe in my heart that this job has been the brook that the Lord Jesus Christ has used to help me to pay off my student loan, which I spoke about um, in this, um, in, on this channel, to help me to be able to do some of the things that I wanted to do. And it has provided me with a lot of beautiful opportunities. And I have met a lot of beautiful, amazing people. I have forged relationships. And I think the hardest part of losing my job would probably be that I would have to leave some of these people behind and start somewhere else. And, um, and I think that is the, that is going to be one of the hard parts. And because the job that I had is tied to my visa in this place. So if I don't get a job within the space of uh, two months or less, then I will uh, probably have to swap as uh, move out or go to another country. I cannot tell you that I, I have any concrete plans. I don't know exactly um, what is going to happen to me after this. I am really excited for this season because the same God who has been step by step providing for me and given has given me this opportunity. I feel like he's the same God who has dried up this brook. And if he didn't dry up the brook with Elijah, Elijah would not have moved on. So therefore, I believe that when God dries up this brook by not allowing me to, um, for them to renew the contract, then I know that God has different for me. God has better for me. God has opportunities waiting for me. And therefore, there is a peace that I feel in my soul, not because I feel like I have something lined up, not because I know of any, um, Thing line up. I haven't even sorted out my resume as yet, much less to apply for a job as yet. But I know that God, the same God who allowed them to take me with stage four endometriosis, with chronic pain, like there were times when I went today to the emergency room. I was, you know, tied up on those strings. I got my IV medicine. I got everything. One, one emergency room I went to, I don't know how the doctor, she couldn't even contain herself. I heard her saying to herself, poor girl. I think that was one of the last major emergency room stories I had before I, before I, um, you know, I went on Visan, which has been helping me to manage the pain by God's grace, you know, and even through this job is where I was able to get some of the medical assistance that I've gotten. And through doctors that I was recommended to by my colleagues as well is where I was able to get assisted um, with my medical treatment. And it is also a miracle that they, they did not have to fire me earlier on because I was too sick. Like I had a relative low sickness for someone with my condition and who went through that simply because sometimes this thing would happen during, you know, weird little off duty uh, periods or on my day off. And I would, I remember afterwards the doctor was saying, oh, you want to get a sick leave? I'm like, no. And the Holy Spirit allowed me to uh, get off that situation. By the next day, I was at work 
present and accounted for and I did my job and nobody knew that I was coming from the emergency room the day before or that the pain that I was enduring as well I would take a lot of very strong uh, pain medicines just to get by because I know that I have a responsibility to take care of myself and I know that God doesn't want me to seize up and die and to forget and to give up on myself so when I um, I'm sure that I will probably have more videos to come and I will have more stories to tell you. But for now, I want to say that I know that God has a plan for me. And I know that I'm not the only one in this situation. Many of my uh, colleagues and, and, and some of my friends and people I know and even people outside of my industry or in, outside of my job have lost your job. You didn't lose your life. You know, I one of the things that I, I told myself as well when I found out as well, I'm like, look, so many people died because of this virus and I am still here. I'm still standing. You know, this co this company could be sending back my body to my family, but they've only told me that they will not renew my contract. So this, when I think of it like that, I see that God has supernaturally protected me from a virus that has killed many, that has made many ill, and I'm still here. I'm still standing. I can still tell you that the brook might have dried up, but you are still standing. So you can still make something of yourself. You can still do something. And you don't know what season God is taking you into. You don't know what miracles God is going to use you to perform. You don't know where God is taking you. So do not be depressed. Do not be discouraged. You know, for me, I'm not saying I'm going to be jumping over the roof or whatever. But for me right now, I'm just thinking, okay, what can I do? What are the steps? I've already packed up my stuff that's related to work. That I'm just waiting for them to tell me when to carry their stuff back and I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna say thank you maybe not out loud I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna say but I know that in my heart I am grateful for this company because they've treated me very well during the time that I've stayed with them and I as I said there's too much experience the video will be too long uh, but I am saying like and I'm letting doing this video so some of my friends who don't know already some of my family uh, My relatives who haven't been um, informed they can know as well And for you my subscribers and the people who watch this video that will be curious as to what is going on So for the next few months and the next few years of my life I know that you will um, follow me on this journey and see you will be able to stand back and see the goodness of the Lord that I serve, that I've been serving since I was 11 years old. The God who has never, never, never failed me yet. He's never failed me. He's always done ex extremely abundantly more than what I can ask or think or imagine. Because I never knew that I would get it to this place in life. Like there were times when I used to sleep on floors, you know. So God has taken me from far. And then too, when I see as well that God has taken me, I have been in much worse, worse situations in my life and God has delivered me. So it's not that I am trying to fake it. I'm not, when, when I say to people that I'm okay, I don't know if they believe me or not, but it's not that it is not something that is going to affect me. Like this is a very big crossroad decision, but I have faith not in myself. I have faith not in my abilities, but I have faith in the God who has always showed up for me. He has always showed up. And in the moments when I thought he wasn't there, when he did come, he came with better. When he did come, he surprised me. When he did come, I was like, oh, what did I want? Oh, fine. This one is better, you know? And I, yeah, so I, 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 want, I would just want to do this video. I'm really excited for my life. I'm excited for the new season. I'm excited that God has supernaturally told me to tell you to embrace your seasons and to tell us to embrace our seasons together. Change is coming. Change, change is happening all over the world. So we cannot expect that it's going to be business as usual. Like so much is happening and I'm just praying to God that God will prepare my mind and your mind for the changes that are coming, for the shifts that are happening. And I pray, oh God, that we will not be left behind, that we will be happy, that we will be motivated, that we will stand firm knowing that God is amazing. God is awesome. And he is the God who has supernaturally provided for me. He has dried up brooks many times in my life and every time the new season is even better. So don't feel bad for me um pray for me though that um the main thing that i want uh prayers for is for wisdom and direction because you know when you have a crossroads there's many roads that you could take 
and I want wisdom for God to show me the right road because recently I've been praying to God and said, God, I don't want to end up like the children of Israel who ended up 40 years walking around just so they can go to the promised land, which they could have been in a few days or whatever, a month or less. Was it a week if they had taken the, the, the shorter route? And I said, God, I know that you will provide for me like you did the Israelites and you will sustain me. But I don't want my decisions to continue to put me in a position where I'm just walking around the desert for many years and I haven't really achieved anything. And I believe that God has heard my prayer as well and that whatever decision I take after this, I know that I don't want to just do it in my flesh or do it out of fear or I, I begin to feel like I'm desperate. I want to be able to sit back. I want to be able to see God do a lot for me. And then the next one last point I want to make um, in this video is that whenever you're going to go through um, such big life changing decisions like this, the way how it's done in the Bible, people always pray and fast. And for me, I am going to go into a season of prayer and fasting because I'm going to really need God to tell me where he wants me to go next. I literally, it's so cute. It's exciting. Like I have no idea. Like in the next three months, I have no idea where I'm going to be like, oh, cool is that like <laughs> sorry guys like i've lived out of my bag for many years so it's kind of normal for me to get to be to move around a bit but i have no idea where i'm gonna be the next three months but i know i'm gonna fast i know i'm gonna pray i know i'm gonna sort out my resume i know i'm gonna tell my friends i'm gonna tell people i'm gonna let them know i'm looking for a job and i'm gonna sit back and relax and see what god can do when we feel like we don't know what to do thank you so much for your time for your energy I am really excited. I just feel so happy. I feel so peaceful because when I saw that letter, I felt peace, you know, and the roster before the duty that I was given before, when I saw the duty, my heart sank. There is a little, little, little part of me that wish I didn't have to go and see, I don't have to go. And it's not that I, I hated my job, but God was preparing me for the season. And that is why I wasn't dropped. That is why I wasn't shocked. That's why I wasn't prepared. If I were to tell you all the steps that God took to show me to so that I could be in this video, not crying, not pitiful, not depressed, but smiling. It's a long story that's been happening for the last at least one year. So I was prepared by the, by, by the Holy Spirit because he knows that I would not be um, staying in this job any longer. And so thank you guys for pouring into my life, for encouraging me and for the Bible study ladies that they, I told them and they were just encouraging me and my friends who I told, they've just been encouraging me and they, they, they make me feel so good and, and, and so happy. And obviously, I think they also make me feel sad because I'm like, shoot, like it's not about just leaving my job. Like, oh my gosh, what about my friends? What am I going to do? What about my friends? Oh my gosh, like this, like that's the weird part. Like, yeah, like I've had a, a life here for some time but guess what our life is in christ and i know wherever he's gonna take me and yeah and i'm gonna still be on youtube so wherever i go i just tell you what's gonna happen so let's see what god is gonna do uh yes bye for now see you next time i'm blade i'm cutting bye see you next time <laughs> i'm blade and i'm cutting <laughs>